here I am again. I'm back, baby. What is going on? I just rewatched. Uh, I haven't watched this movie in a long time. I just rewatched the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie, and I have to say, this is my opinion. This has to be the best video game adaptation into a movie of all time, of all time. Now, I will say this. I will just quickly say this. I want to defend that Mario movie that is either from the early 90s or the late 80s. I should have looked up the fucking date, but I'm here to talk about Mortal Kombat, not that fucking Super Mario movie. But everybody shits on that movie. That's a good ass movie and it actually has some good world building. But anyways... You know, I don't think that's a bad movie. And you have to think, people didn't know how to make... Imagine you have to make the first video game movie. How do you do that? I don't know. Like, and, and that's pretty good, if you think about it. I don't know. Give it a rewatch. That's a pretty good movie. But definitely, give a rewatch to fucking 1995 Mortal Kombat. And if you have never seen it, shut this fucking video off and go watch it. Go watch it immediately. It's on Max right now, HBO Max. It's just called Max now. Um, go watch it. I think it's a buy. I think it's an absolute 100% buy. Um, this movie is excellent. This movie kicks so much ass. This movie is fun. This movie is so much fun. It's that type of fun that you, you just like don't really get anymore. And it kind of, it's a type of fun that only really existed at that time in the 90s. And this is like peak for me. This is like peak action. This is peak action movie shit, like fighting shit in the 90s. Um, this movie is PG-13, which I could see could be a big slight against the movie. I don't think so. I don't think so. If you think about it, Who's playing the fucking Mortal Kombat games? A lot of teenagers. And there would be so many tickets you wouldn't sell. It's a smart move. It's, it, economically, it's a smart move. And I think that uh, there's just so many tickets you wouldn't sell if you would have made this R-rated. Even though it is called Mortal Kombat. <laughs> and it's known for, like, it's very brutal fatalities. I mean, when the original Mortal Kombat game came out, there were, like, actual it, it caused a hubbub there are actual like court cases about it and stuff like that but anyways this movie is excellent this movie is so fun this movie kicks so much ass that before anything is even shown on the screen this movie is already when the production logos are coming up it's already going before there's even anything just like the fucking production logos for the movie and the fucking, the, like the Mortal Kombat logo with flames coming out of it. That's how the movie starts. And then the first scene of this movie is Liu Kang having a nightmare about what happened to his younger brother, his kid brother, Chan Kang. Chan Kang, who's this must be the biggest idiot in the world. This fucking 13 year old kid thinks that he could have stood a chance in the Mortal Kombat tournament, which is a tournament that like, you know, I'll get into it. I'll get into it. But he thinks he could, he thinks he can, <laughs> he has a chance in the Mortal Kombat tournament. And uh, Shane Sung, this evil sorcerer who works for the fucking evil emperor, who's uh, just hell bent on enslaving like everything in existence. And he does it through winning these Mortal Kombat tournaments. So the rules are, if you, <clears throat> if you win 10 Mortal Kombat tournaments in a row, if Shane Sung and his fucking evil goons win 10 Mortal Kombat tournaments in a row, then uh, they get to enslave everybody in this reality. And it's up to Liu Kang, Sonya Blade, and Johnny Cage. Three human beings who are recruited by Raiden, the god of like lightning and thunder, I believe, but like definitely lightning. He, they, it's up to these three. <laughs> it's up to these three to win the Mortal Kombat tournament because Shane Sung and his goons have already won nine. If they want, win 10, they enslave everybody. 
And this is the 10th one that is coming up. And they are recruited by Raiden to fight in it. Actually, Shane Sung also, like, he has a hand in recruiting them. Because he, he morphs himself. He can morph himself. So he, like, morphs himself into this guy that Johnny Cage really likes. And he's like, Johnny, you know, everybody's calling you a fake. But uh, I know that you're not a fake. You're one of the best fighters in the world. You should fucking uh, do the Mortal Kombat uh, comp competition. You should do that shit. I think you'd be really good, kid. All right. See you later. And it's actually... <laughs> It's actually uh, Shane Sung just, just pulling his fucking leg. But uh, let me fix this. Let me just fix this just really quick. All right, there we go. So that's the plot. The plot is so simple and good because majority of the movie is just fighting. Like 90% of this fucking movie is just fighting and it is fucking amazing. There's only one real fight that I have an issue with and it's like a non-fight. And I can't believe that that neither of these fighters just get killed immediately for not really fighting. But it's the fight between Katana and fucking Liu Kang. If we're just gonna get the bat out of the way, let's just get this shit out of the way first. The 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 fight between Katana and Liu Kang is fucking terrible. It only exists. Katana in this movie is a throwaway character, and she only exists. To be in this one scene where she tells Liu Kang, hey, you're going to fight Sub-Zero right after you fight me. And you got to use water to beat him. And that's it. And she says it in a cryptic way. She doesn't even say that. She's like, you got to use like the essence of life to destroy this, this person, this creature in blue. <laughs> this ice demon or whatever. And um, this ice ninja, you know, ice ninja demon, whatever the fuck they are under those fucking cloaks or whatever. Um... But uh, that's it. That is the worst fight. That is the worst fucking fight in the whole movie. Um, it, it's barely a fight. Like, they're not even kicking each other's asses. Like, they're not even doing anything. Uh, all the fights are pretty fucking good. I would say the top three fights, the top three fights are um, Scorpion versus Johnny Cage, obviously, obviously. That whole forest backdrop is fucking cool that forest i don't know what forest they're in but i love how all the trees are lined up and everything and dude okay i was born in 1989 so i saw this movie on vhs i did not get to see it in the fucking movie theater but i saw this on vhs i kind of tricked my grandma into to getting this for me but i saw this movie in vhs and when scorpion says get over here and you fucking think he shoots the fucking thing out of his hand Dude, I lost my shit as a fucking little kid. I'm probably eating like little chicken nuggets or whatever and fucking ketchup. Like, oh my god! Like, get over here! I'm like, holy fuck! But that, that shit was awesome. That shit was awesome to me as a kid. That's a great one. Um, I would say Goro versus Johnny Cage. Johnny Cage is the best fucking character, by the way, easily. And Johnny Cage is hilarious. Um... But Johnny Cage versus Goro, that's probably one of the other great fights. And then, surprisingly, when I rewatched this, I really liked... And these are in no particular order, but I really liked the fight between Liu Kang and Reptile. And it's a really unexpected fight. Like, it's probably the most unexpected fight because it happens after a lot of major fights happen. Um, it happens after the Goro and Johnny Cage fight happens and holy shit like it like it goes on for a decent amount of time I think it's about like a five six minute fight or something like that like which is pretty good and Luke Kane even does the he does the fucking bicycle kick he does the fucking bicycle kick and he destroys Reptile um going back to the Goro and um the Goro and uh what the fuck Johnny Cage fight it's fucking awesome. It follows, it follows this collage of Goro. So all, all of Shane Sung's um, goons are just getting destroyed. Like he thought Kano was gonna be hot shit and Sonya Blade just fucking cracks his neck. That's a good fight. Uh, Sonya Blade just like gets his neck between her legs and then just cracks his neck to death and that's it. She, he goes, give me a break, Sonya, give me a break, babe. And she goes, not a bad idea or something like that. And she fucking cracks his neck. It's hilarious. And um, 
you know, all of these fighters are just getting destroyed. Like, Johnny Cage kills Scorpion. Uh, fucking Liu Kang kills Sub-Zero with water. I Like, that, that fight could have gone on longer. It's, it's okay. It could have gone on longer. And it would have just been cool because like Luke Kane has like his like fucking flame ball thing and so like you know flames versus ice that would have been cool to see but Luke Kane the way he defeats before I get to the Goro and Johnny Cage thing and why it's such a cool fight um Luke Kane the way that he fucking kills Sub-Zero is he gets there's a bucket of water that's left behind by a Raiden <laughs> that's like with a smirk he leaves behind this bucket of water he's like <laughs> Okay, let's see if Luke Kane knows to use this. And Luke Kane, when, when Sub-Zero's making this big fucking ice force field thing, Luke Kane swings this bucket of water and throws it into this, this ice force field thing that's freezing in anything that's within it. And water, like, shoot, like, kind of flows out of the bucket and turns into, like, this perfect ice pick and stabs through... Sub-Zero and it kills him and that's how he that's how Liu Kang kills Sub-Zero. It's pretty lame That's and that's like the only purpose of Katana's character is be like hey use water to kill Sub-Zero. It's so fucking lame, but um <laughs> that, that could that fight could have been a little bit better Because Sub-Zero has one of the coolest scenes like earlier in the movie where he freezes this guy Who's doing this jump kick and he fucking the guy smashes into a thousand pieces and It's one of the most iconic things in the whole movie but anyways, uh, Shane Sung is getting pissed off and he's like, all oh, my fucking guys are losing. Goro, just kill everybody. Because Goro is this four-armed fucking monster. He's this fucking monster <laughs> from another fucking dimension or something like that. Like, I don't know what this thing is. He's from another reality. And he, there is just like a, a collage, a compilation of him just flawlessly destroying all of these fighters like he's just killing all of them and there's this one fighter who's uh johnny cage's friend who you barely ever know anything about his name is art his, his name is art and he's just this guy that's like hey johnny i know that you're not a fake you're a cool guy I like you know like the tabloids are calling johnny cage a fake and he's just like i know you're not a fake you're one of the best fighters in the world and you're my friend and then <laughs> and then uh art of course doesn't stand a chance against goro um, Goro destroys him, and then Shane Sung sucks his soul out, like, you know, your soul is mine, and fucking sucks his soul out into his fucking eyeball, and, um, and, uh, even though you never, you don't ever hear a lot about Art, his name is Art, A-R-T, even though you don't, you barely see him in the movie, both Sonya and Johnny Cage's reaction are this, <gasps> Like, but I mean, I guess it would suck to see, even if you just had an acquaintance, if you saw this acquaintance that you're like, hey, that's a pretty cool guy. And you saw his fucking soul got sucked out and like just, you know, caged into another person. That would be terrifying. So I, I could see why they did that. But anyways, uh, Johnny Cage, <laughs> Johnny Cage, um, he fights Goro and he does this sucker punch thing where he does the splits. He does his famous the splits and he fucking does the nut punch. He nut punches Goro. <laughs> Cause he tells, he tells Sonya, he's like, I got a plan. I got a plan. Don't worry, babe. I got a plan. I'm going to fucking beat Goro. It's like, nobody can beat Goro. Like he's a fucking monster. He's like, I got it. I got a bitch. Like then, <laughs> and he fucking gets him. He gets Goro in the fucking nuts. And he kicks Goro's ass. Um, I don't even think he gets hit. I think he has a flawless victory against Goro. Uh, Goro, if I'm not mistaken. Goro crushes his glasses at the beginning of his sunglasses at the beginning of the match. And Johnny Cage um like knocks him off of this cliff and he says, Those were those were five hundred dollar sunglasses, asshole, which is one of the best lines in the movie. I just fucked it up too. Those are five hundred dollar sunglasses, asshole, and fucking destroys him. And Goro's like hanging off of this ledge. And there's a callback to a joke earlier in the movie where he's like, this is the part where you fall down, fucking girl falls. And uh, 
it's it's just an, it's it's a really good scene. It's a really good scene, and it's like that that line where he with the five hundred dollar sunglasses asshole. That line when I was a kid, I was like, ooh, I love this line, but I can't say that word because I'm a little kid and my parents would get pissed off at me. But I just love that line, and to this day, I love that line. Also, another line I just want to say that I just love is um, when Raiden is telling them at the beginning of the movie that. <laughs> He's like, the fate of billions are in your hand. <laughs> Sorry. <And> then, <laughs> that's how he says it. And I laughed at that when I was a kid. And I laugh at that now. That shit is funny. Where it's like Raiden is just having a ball. He's like, you know, because he's a fucking god. So it's like, if, if they lose and all of humanity is enslaved by the emperor, I mean, Raiden probably gets away scot-free. He's probably like, hey, I just, I'm just here to try to save you. You can't save yourself. Sorry about that, bitches. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, but he just does this thing, like this, this little joke where it's like billions of lives. Like everybody's lives are in your hand. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> and it is funny. It's funny as shit. Um... The, I, I gotta, you know, I've basically been telling you the whole movie, so I just gotta tell you the way the movie ends. Somehow, somehow, Liu Kang, so the, the end of the movie is Sonya Blade gets, she becomes a damsel, damsel in distress. She only has like one major fight, and then she becomes the damsel in distress. But, um, but, uh... Sorry about sorry about any noise out there. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep rolling through this. Um, we're almost to the end. So Sonya Blade, she becomes the damsel in distress. Unfortunately, Shane Sung captures her, and then they have to go and rescue her. And uh, Liu Kang kicks Shane Sung's ass at the end of the movie. I almost said at the end of the game. That's how good this movie is as an adaptation. Because I almost said game, and that's how like. Maybe it's good that it was a fighting game. Maybe that's why it, it works out so well. But anyways, Shane Sung, he's supposed to have the power of every soul he's taken. And Liu Kang has how many souls? How many souls? Let me, how many souls? Let me take uh, let me think about it. let me think about one soul. He has one soul. And some but but Liu Kang is the chosen one. He's the chosen one. This is before the Matrix. The, the, they already had like that chosen one talk uh in this in this thing and um he's kicking Shane Sung's ass. Shane Sung is a little fucking bitch by the way. Shane Sung is getting his ass kicked very clearly and he has to summon these like underground fighters. He has to summon these fighters from underground. I think they're called like the immortals or something like that. And uh they pop out of like these manholes like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Fucking uh uh Liu Kang effortlessly destroys all of them just destroys all of them uh you, you know kind of breaks a sweat and he's like all right bitch like <laughs> and, and 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 Shane Sung's like watching this from up above like he he goes to this like elevated platform up these stairs and then and then uh Luke Kang goes up there and Shane Sung being the little bitch that he is because he knows he's gonna fucking lose and he knows that Luke Kang is the fucking chosen one he turns into Chan Kang he transforms into Chan Kang, um, the little brother whose soul he took at the beginning of the fucking movie. Um, and he tries to trick Liu Kang, and Liu Kang's like, bitch, I know that that's not my little brother, that's you, uh, dumbass uh, Shane Sung, I'm, I'm here to fucking fuck you up. And he... <laughs> and he fucking... He fucking beats the shit out of him, Without Shane Sung ever even landing a hand on him, he beats the fucking shit out of him and does the fireball thing. He finally does the fireball thing and knocks Shane Sung off of this elevated platform into these fucking spikes. And then all of the souls that Shane Sung ever took, they come out of him in this like this fucking soul beam. And uh, Chan comes out of it, and he's like, Liu Kang, you, you freed me, and you freed all the people, and, uh, you know, we'll be together again, and <laughs> we'll be together again. 
and uh, until then, I'll always be with you. And it's just like this really sweet thing, and he just fucking goes up in this beam. You know, where's art? Like, I, it's sad that Art's soul didn't get to go and talk to Johnny Cage and be like, hey, Johnny, I just want to let you know that I'm okay. I'll always be with you, and we'll be together again one day. But, you know, whatever. I guess it's because Johnny Cage isn't the chosen one. Even though Johnny Cage fucking beat Goro. Like, I know that Shane Sung's supposed to be, like, the most powerful, but... Like, dude, Goro's a fucking monster, and Johnny Cage just destroyed him. But anyways, uh, it, it th this is how it ends, where there there's this instant celebration after that fight, and everybody's like, woo, like, you know, humanity's saved, we're not gonna be enslaved. And then, uh, and then, like, the emperor pops out of this temple, and the emperor is, like, this fucking mountainous, like, godlike thing and he fucking bursts out of this like buddhist temple and he's like your souls will be mine and uh it's like i'm gonna enslave you all and uh raiden's like i don't think so and they all get into fighting stance and then it goes to credits and it's like bum, 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 banana, bum, 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 bum. it's that's mortal combat that is 1995's mortal combat what a fucking good movie like I said, if you haven't seen it, please, for the love of God, go fucking see this movie. If you have seen it, I hope that I've inspired you to rewatch it. It's an amazing fucking movie, and uh, that's it for this video. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.